Hey, welcome to another radio video. And um, this is a little tutorial about knowing if your I, IN radio is actually um, well calibrated on the frequencies. Uh, some radios let you actually open them up and have this little um, variable capacitor or uh, resistor that you can uh, actually turn to uh, tune precisely the frequency of your radio. Um, all radios typically have a little off frequency. Uh, they rarely are perfect and when they are, well they need to be adjusted regularly. Uh, I'm a uh, very I believe that when your radio has three digits past the point, I don't think the third digit, is, third digit is very precise and it shouldn't be used honestly uh, for frequency reference. But uh, two digits, it's getting interesting. Um, when your radio is at about a 10 hertz possibility, usually you can get quite precise in your frequency measurement. Um, but you need to know if your radio's on the spot. And one of the ways that you can actually know that is by tuning the WWV uh, frequencies for the time signal. Because what's interesting on WWV is they use a tone. And you can actually listen to that tone to know if your radio's off. So what you want to do is tune one of the frequencies that you, in, you hear from WWV. Uh, 2.5, 5, 10, 15, and 20 megahertz. Once you're there, you'll alternate between AM, upper and lower sideband, and listen to the difference in the tone. <laughs> if you don't hear a difference between AM, and sideband, you can see here there's a, it's almost imperceptible the difference here. That means that the radio is pretty much well calibrated. <coughs> if you have a difference in the audio tone, then what you'll need to do is tune around to the highest precision of your radio. So you'll go into, for example, here. Go here and you'll tune it until it's exactly the same. So if, for example, tuning to the same tone means that you're at 0 0.02, you know that you're 20 hertz off in the frequency of the radio. Now your service manual for your radio probably tells you a entry point where you can actually adjust that setting. Uh, I remember in my Kenwood R5000 there was a little trimmer pot that you could go with a plastic screwdriver and turn it slowly to match that frequency and I remember about once every six months I would open the cover go and tune it until it's perfect pitch and leave it like that and basically that would be something to do about every six months because the electronics in the radio tend to change value with time so your radio slowly gets offset uh, which is a normal electronic thing for almost every radio uh, for example here in my R5, R8500 there's no trimmer pot that I can use uh, there's no setting for that but there's one little setting in the menu where I can actually put an offset and I can say well I want to select an offset of I don't know if it's for example 0 0.01 then I'll use an offset of 0 0.01 in the receiver itself that will let me compensate basically for the offset that the receiver has in frequency now I don't need to change this here because when I listen to the tone there's not enough 
difference in my tone here to actually set a difference to tune my radio. So I can say that my radio is pretty much calibrated for radio listening and if I hear a single sideman signal I know that the frequency I'm tuning to have the right pitch is probably very close to the uh, real transmitted frequency. Um, for radio listening having a difference in the uh, displayed frequency and the actual frequency of only 10 or 20 Hertz is not that big a deal um, first it's there's no deal at all if you're in AM mode because you won't hear a difference of 10 Hertz or 20 Hertz in AM mode uh, the difference will appear more when you're in single sideband because you got to be more precise in your tuning and so if you have a 10 or 20 Hertz difference it's not that big a deal but it does mean that you have to account for it. You have to, to look at your display and say, okay, I got 20 hertz, means that when I tune a signal, uh, I got just, I gotta remember that I'm always 20 hertz off, either upper or lower the frequency, so that you can actually compensate when you look at a signal. And um, really tell what's the real frequency. Uh, the importance is much, much, much more, um, I would say, in the amateur radio bands because if you are an amateur radio operator, having your frequency being off can actually induce, first of all, interference to other users. But not just that, it also will make your sound, your voice in a single sign band, for example, offset from the other uh, people that are talking on the same channel. So if you're, uh, I don't know, on a 20 meter band, you're at 14.200, people are talking on upper sideband, your radio's off by 30 hertz, well, when you're tuned to that frequency and start talking to them, you might uh, actually be off, and it's gonna be uh, annoying for the others, first of all, and it's gonna also be, uh, the others have to tune around to actually get your frequency. So um, in a listening environment having 10, 20 hertz off is not too bad but in a transmitting environment with amateur radio equipment your radio needs to be as precise as possible. It's very important to be very very near the frequency, the closest possible. So uh, you can use WWV uh, or any tone generated signal uh, if you have a frequency um, generator uh, at home well you can of course use that uh, generated signal from your uh, radio frequency generator and tune it with that type of signal also keep in mind that using WWV can at times um, induce an error in the tuning frequency uh, because of propagation conditions and the way things work and the uh, and the physics of radio signals listening to WWV from far away uh, in certain conditions there is a possibility that the frequency can be off on WWV signals because of propagation characteristics so uh, if you check WWV for calibration um, check at least two or three times uh, at different days to make sure that things are okay. So I uh, hope this uh, little feature um, <coughs> was enjoyable. Uh, keep in mind that if you have a little portable shortwave radio, uh, some of them have a BFO with a little dent uh, giving you the upper lower sideband the dent should normally be a little off, um, should, should not be off, sorry, it should be pretty much on the tone, so if you have to uh, put the little wheel off the dent a little bit, uh, keep in mind that your portable radio might be a little off. Uh, most portable receivers don't have any adjustments uh, in the frequency, so um, 
a lot of those portable radios will simply have to stay a little off frequency unfortunately so hope you enjoyed this little feature on the, the frequency calibration of your receiver <coughs> and um, if you see a difference in your receivers uh, calibration with that little feature then um, hey get your service manual if you're a little a uh, bit of a tech guy, you uh, aren't afraid of taking that cover off your radio then uh, hey get your little service manual or go on the internet just put your model and um, you know click frequency calibration you just google uh, your radio model and frequency calibration and you'll probably have a uh, a blog or a, a website with uh, information on how to do it some radios are surprisingly easy to calibrate. Uh, that's what I enjoyed about my old Kenwood R5000. It's just how easy it is to calibrate. Some, well, very complicated. Some are not really good for calibration. And of course, um, if you suspect something's wrong, you're not really sure, well, you can also bring your uh, radio into the shop and let a professional do it for you. So thanks for watching and 73.